Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. 1963, when they took the briar to Brandon. Hi, everybody. I'm Don Whitman with Don Duga, two-time world champion. Hi again, curling fans. Nothing like an afternoon special in the Eastern time zone. And good morning to you, Colleen. And congratulations, Coach. Hey, Coach Jones. Welcome to that curling show. And didn't you love seeing the roll call that other people got up with us? Love you. And Abby Pond meeting her here, one of our very first That Curling Show guests, doing the ice here at the Scotties. What a Scotties, Dev! Uh, I'm exhausted, but I'm ready to go uh, because it has been a dramatic Scotty's call. There were storylines going into it. And then as we got closer, of course, even more storylines. It has been exactly a week since the bombshell news, learning that Brianne Harris would be deemed ineligible. This is all the information we have, even to this point, Colleen, uh, that Curling Canada was made aware, I think that's a key yeah. point in this statement, that Brianne Harris would be ineligible to compete in the Scotties. You've been on the ground. What are you hearing, if anything, Call Radio silence is what we're hearing, and likely for good reason. We're all warned ahead of Scotties and having been a carded athlete of the things you can and can never do. Um, so we know what those things are. You are not allowed to gamble on the sport. You are not allowed to take a whole long list of drugs that includes supplements, maybe right. even some protein powders, or maybe some of the overnight cold medications, things like this. What there is a universal thing on, uh, Brianna is adored by most, cur all curlers yeah. and their fans. Everybody's giving her the benefit of the doubt until the truth comes out. There's mm. been a lot of frustration in the curling world, of course, sure. that it has been radio silence, but it's radio silence because of the appeal process, privacy rules and things like that. The, one of the big things, though, Devin, is how impressive it has been for sure. Team Carrie Anderson to carry on in this situation yeah. because they'd be playing those first couple of games with such heavy hearts worrying about their teammates. Well, and shout out to Kristen Karwacki, who of course stepped in. Can you imagine the adrenaline rush and everything? Of course, a four-time defending champion, Team Anderson, into the playoffs. We have a lot to get to. I did, uh, I did stop Kristen and say, uh, in, in the bowels of the building and say, you're doing amazing. To uh, Just unbelievably well to step into this situation and play as well as she's playing. I think she's the top lead, if I'm not mistaken, statistically. 88, 88 to 90 percent throughout. Yeah. It's been fantastic. Listen, I've been, you know, I've been doing journalism, putting on my news cap in the mm -hmm. background, uh, phoning WADA, phoning the Canadian Centre for Ethics and Sport, phoning World Curling Federation, Curling Canada every day and, and radio silence as well. Yeah. My sense, Colleen, is that we will get clarity. I know there has been some concern that this might just get swept under the rug. The sense I'm getting from the conversations I'm having, we're going to get clarity, maybe not in the time that people would want it to happen, but that's my sense is that everything will come to light yeah. sooner than later. There's not a lot of, uh, it, let's, let's just, as a person that was drug tested a lot uh, when we were Team Canada, I lived in fear that my caffeine was going right. to be over, right? So right. so who knows what it is, radio silence here, uh, but everybody is, um, this is so big for Brianne that she overturns it and gets going. She's got a lot on the line in this next couple of years, this, this team, mostly the Olympics. So. Isn't that the big thing? Um, so uh, stay tuned on that. Whenever we get updates, we'll be sure to share it with you. Of course, Jennifer Jones on her retirement tour into the playoffs. Is, well. That's been an amazing story too. But I'm trying to unretire her. I am starting a campaign. You She's have too been. Good. She's too good to leave the game. Well, listen, if she goes on to win a historic seventh and, and you know, breaks a tie with you, she might have to come back at Steam Canada. And then if she does that, she might have to stay on for the Olympic trials. Playing. More, more to come on that. We'll get into the playoff scenarios. Of course, 18 teams down to six. Four of those playoff teams, Colleen, Manitoba. We get it. You're good at curling, including 
Skipper Kate Cameron. Mm -hmm. Last qualifier winning that must win game. Good morning, Kate. Good morning. Oh, Kate, I went looking for you after we got off the ice and you were already out of the building and not even in the patch. <laughs> Congratulations <laughs> on making the playoffs. What a run you had yesterday. First off, how's your third feeling? Because I know she missed the game against us. Yeah, I think uh, not feeling 100% right now, but uh, hopeful to have her out there tonight. And I think uh, pretty, pretty wonderful of her to uh, get through the battle last night and then put forward a really good game. So, yeah. Kate, congratulations. Uh, so much pressure in the final draw, a must win game. And you come up big, you come up clutch. Tell me about the character of this team. Now you're into another must win scenario, but how nice is it that you've been battle tested a little bit and you pulled through? Yeah, I think uh, we've had quite a few games like that this year where it's kind of do or die. And, and uh, I think it speaks to the the grit of these girls that I have on this team. And I think uh, we never quit where even if the scoreboard isn't really in our favor, we're, we're going a hundred percent until we can do everything we can do until that last rock stops. And uh, we knew we were in the position we wanted to be going into yesterday morning and then uh, to be able to control our own fate. Uh, we just took the opportunity and capitalized on it. So yeah, you've got your wall. You, you had your back up against the wall yesterday. And then that, that's how playoffs are, isn't it? How's that skipper voice of yours doing? Will it last? <laughs> Can't you tell? Uh, it's so loud in that arena that I feel like uh, we have to scream. And playing three-handed was so challenging for how loud it was. And I know you were on the bench that game, Colleen, but mm -hmm. that morning draw was so loud with all mm -hmm. the students that were in the building. And, and uh, we rely solely on that that outside sweeper to be our communicator. So we were all just um, being as loud as we could and clearly I'm paying for it right now. Yeah. So but tell me, how yeah. much did you pay the thousands of students that were there to keep shouting Manitoba, Manitoba, Manitoba all the time? <laughs> did they not even Pretty know great. Nova Scotia this time? They're, what did they pay off these kids with a few pins, no doubt? <laughs> yeah, that was wonderful. Uh, hey, what do you think of this playoff format? Mm. Yeah. Um, I was chatting earlier this week with some people from TSN and uh, I've played in a few of these now and, and I think I've only ever played in two where it's been the same format. And I think, um, I think, I think we're getting closer and I, I think I like it. Uh, we're obviously in the more do or die side of this, but I think being rewarded to be first or second in your pool and have that extra life is really huge. Um, it's nice not to enter that final round and still have mm. six games to go so i think that's uh, a perk for those teams that do finish one or two and even us uh with a do or die i think it's it's four or, or go home so yeah. um it's nice not to kind of have to reset and play a whole new tournament after you already did your round robin i think that's quite nice and uh, i think i like it i think and it is a whole new tournament by the way right now <laughs> it, it, well it, uh, yeah it but there's not that games to go and a bunch of tiebreakers right. along the way. So uh, I think I like uh, Kate, uh, there are some skips who don't watch anything that's going on uh, when they're waiting for their game. Are you one of those skips or will you be watching uh, the draw ahead of you to, to see what's happening on the ice and to see some tendencies? Yeah, I think uh, we watch. We're, we're not watching necessarily to pick up on tendencies and stuff like that. Uh, the girls, we kind of hang out and we uh, shoot the shit and watch the games together, I think. So it's been just kind of a bonding time for us. And I think um, it's not necessarily a strategic or game plan. It's just kind of to kick back and relax. So I'm sure we'll do that this afternoon as well. Nice. nice. Well, good luck. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and, and we have to ask. Uh, Four of the six playoff teams from Manitoba. Uh, I'm from Saskatchewan, Kate. I know the Prairie rivalry. Um, and so Manitobans are proud, chested right now over this. What do you attribute the, the depth and the su success to in Manitoba curling? Because this is extraordinary. Yeah, I think it's no secret to Canada that Manitoba has been producing some solid women's curling teams. Uh, I think there's still so many more in Manitoba that don't get the opportunity to compete on this national stage. And I think um, we're fortunate to be able to compete against these teams in our provincial playdowns and kind of prepare us for 
for a big event like the Scotties like this. So, uh, yeah, I think there's tons of talent in Manitoba, some that maybe haven't been on the the TV yet to kind of get that exposure. But I, I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, a different two teams at, enter a national championship at some point. It also helps, Devin, that across the street from our hotel, we overlook nothing but a wall of bisons. <laughs> right? I mean, is that a message saying, man, it's over? You know? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's pretty great. I, I mean, we're pretty happy to be a part of the the four that are here and and uh, be able to join in that playoff hunt. Yeah, good. Very good easy. luck. Keep, uh, gargle, salt, warm water, lozenges, throat spray, you know. Go Perfect. Ahead. I'll work on it. <laughs> awesome, Kate. Rest up. Good luck tonight. So wonderful to watch you do your thing out there. Good luck this evening. Yeah. Thanks, guys. Okay. Yeah. And Bye -bye. Deb, what's nice for um, Kate Cameron and company is that they got in without having to worry about the tiebreakers, not so in the other pool. My goodness. Where, and, you know, even Caitlin Laws, who is able to get through with four losses, which is pretty a lot of losses in a short round robin. Um, she even said about, um, a, you know, draw to the button uh, being the thing. The first part of the week, draw to the button was miserable, like just really um uh, nasty conditions of so heavy. Right. At one point for your first rock in your practice, uh, we were just throwing peel and it would stop in the house. And everybody, it was like that across the board. So draw to the button early was pretty nasty. Well, so I, I and, and, and guess what? For the five teams in Pool A, that was the difference. And of course, you and I in our pre-chat, pre-show meeting, we talked about this. You have five teams unparalleled uh, at the Scotties, five teams for the last playoff spot in Pool A. I've been inundated with questions, Call You don't have whiteboards, so let me try and break it down. Yeah, well, uh, let's do it. Here's, here's a bit of the playoffs, but, but Laws is into the playoffs because with that five-team logjam all tied, the next tiebreaker is head-to-head. -head. They were still tied, so then they go to the last stone draw, cumulative score, mm. and Laws – gets in so no tiebreakers and no draw this morning so that's where we're at oh and but let's explain this playoff system because well wow. yeah so here we go first in a play second and b first and b play second in a so let's look at the graphic here for the matchups that happen at 2 p.m eastern Sturme mm -hmm. first in a jones second and b homan first and b Anderson, talk about that juggernaut showdown call. And then the winners of those games go to the one two page playoff game. The losers drop to play Laws and Cameron. Is that clear? You got as clear as mud, but complicated at the same time. It's nice when if every if everybody in the stands had this graphic in front of them, it would be a lot clearer. I love this Sturme team, by the way. One snafu about this draw, though, Devin, Jones and Holman were both on the ice last night. And you kind of go, wait a minute. So in the other two teams got to get a rest. In normal Scotties, because there were tiebreakers, the tiebreakers would have been last night and this morning. Exactly. Holman and Jones would not have been playing. I don't like that they're almost, well, they are back-to-back -back games for them, yeah. right? Yeah. They got probably home and into bed by 1130 by the time they do their debrief and wind down. Yeah, uh, maybe they wouldn't sleep much anyhow the night before big games. But I just think that's something that's got to be fixed. Uh, that Friday night, maybe there are no, you know, I don't know where you squeeze another game in. But it just seems like the top two teams are um, are still out there playing last night late. Sure. Well, hopefully they slept in. And Jennifer Jones did text me. She said simply thank you to all the fans as she gets ready for a big playoff game. We're yeah. going to Joanne Courtney now, who is getting ready for a big show on TSN. She's been outstanding. Outstanding. Hi, guys. <laughs> You're running into the rink. I oh, love this it. Is, this is chaos. I was in the rink, and then my internet connection became unstable. So <laughs> hang on. We're going to hop in the car. I hear you. This is why I chose to do it at the hotel room. The internet okay. instability of worldwide. Hello. Hi, right, we're we're back in there, girlfriend. Buckle up. Hi, guys. It's chaos. Just chaos. That is life. Chaos. Yes. So, what do you uh, what do you think? What are you looking forward to today? Going into uh, the okay. second round of the Scotties playoff. Yes. Game. Okay. I was like marinating on this whole setup because this is the first year. We've seen this playoff format. 
And like, think about this. So you just said Jones and Holman played last night. They're right back on the ice today at noon. The loser of this game has to play tonight. Wow. Right? So you're playing in a crazy intense game. Winner to the one, two. That's amazing. But loser suddenly is trying to play to get into that three, four. They have to win four in a row all of a sudden to win the Scotties. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that wild? That's right. Yeah. So what is, is there a fixed? I mean, a lot of people in the patch last night are already talking about what to tweak. Some people say it's as simple as if you're not going to do tiebreakers based and use lost don't draw based on world curling, why not just go to sudden death? Semi-final. Semi-final. Yeah, I mean, do you ever just take on the world format, right? Mm-hmm. Why right. don't you go into the semi and then three three to six are playing in that quarters? Sure. Right? I mean, if we're trying to be more like the world. Exactly. I know, when I first looked at it, I was like, I love it that one and two get rewarded for being at the top of their pool. They've got, you know, double life, whatever. But I'm just looking at that double life now and I'm like, ooh, that's a, that's a mm. bit of a crazy double life. Because even think about it. Team Laws, all of a sudden you're in, you didn't think, you thought you're out of it. Now they get the whole day to rest. They're going to come, they're fresh and ready to go. Yes. And they're going to get a loser, right? Yeah. Right. And it's, you're, you bring up a good point because it's anytime you're in an A, B, C draw, when you're in B and drop down to C, C's almost got the advantage because yeah. they're like, we're still alive. People, well, people. Go ahead, Joe. And I was thinking too, Colleen, like this is giving me Eve Muirhead vibes. Is it? Is it giving that oh, to you for Caitlin? Right, right. Like yes. you said at the Olympics, Eve got off the ice after her fourth loss because she went five and four and yep. said, oh, fourth loss, Colleen, it's too many. I don't think yes. so. I think she we're out of it. She her eyes. She thought she was done. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you live to see another day and like there's her gold medal. Yeah, you yeah. kind of think it's a sign from the heavens. That well, I, it is. I mean, here we go. Five teams, everything that went right or had to go right did go right. Joe, I love the point you made, and I love that you got the eye patches on. I could use some today. Um, <laughs> but I love what you said about the, the intensity of that game and how draining that could be. You've been in so many of those. Can you tell the fans just about the adrenaline and the exhaustion of, of being like a Holman versus Anderson first game. Oh, like that's right? yeah. Lot. It's crazy. And like you're living and dying by every single shot. And this is a great rivalry between Holman and Anderson. We're always in for a treat when we see that. Right. And like the winner of that game, holy cow, momentum heading into that one too. I mean, we didn't expect to see this matchup this early. Right. right. We would have expected to see this matchup once we actually officially got into that page playoff. So you're you're in every single shot. You were like dumping as much energy as possible. And then the letdown from that for whoever loses this game mm-hmm. is such a quick turnaround. You know, there's mm-hmm. like what they'll be off the ice around three and then you're right back on at six. First exactly. practice is at five thirty. Exactly. You got two hours to, to yeah. shake it off and, and come back in and refuel that tank. And that's hard to do at this point in the week. And, and, and let's face it, game. Holman, Holman is heads and heels st- statistically and just the look of them Ooh, yeah. uh, in this field like if they don't win this i am going to be shocked yeah i mean all the other teams are all good but boy they are great here are they not oh yeah, oh, yeah. they're so talented and to see all four of them firing on all cylinders yeah. like that's that's something we hadn't quite seen yet i mean but now we've seen it all season so my only question was like ooh, no provincial have they had a little too much time but they took that time to train so Watch out. They are looking so good. Joe, just a note on communication. I have been so impressed with Team Homan's communication. There seems to be a different vibe and tone and just atmosphere. Are you sensing that because you've been a part of so many of those conversations? Oh, yeah. And it's for me, it's there's a. there's a sense that they're not gripping it too tight. Like they're, they're so, they're so fiery and intense. Like Rachel is dialed in. And I mean, I said it leading into this event, it's kind of theirs to lose right now. I mean, they've only lost five games all year. Right. Right. So you think that you might get into this, this sense of like urgency or like the frustration if things aren't going your way. I mean, cause they're all throwing the rock so well, but Colleen, like you guys had a crazy close game with them last night and Mm -hmm. I didn't see any of the, the uh, what would I call that like the panic that you would expect I mean right. obviously they didn't have to win that game right. but they want to be playing strong heading into the playoffs yeah. and you know there was no panic there was no um silence because that's that's when you get worried if you see someone shutting down after yeah. a loss as soon as you stop talking out there that's that's big trouble because arena ice I love it so much it's solving the puzzle right it's going to mm-hmm. change as the game goes on so if you get a miss because something's changing you have to talk about it so you make that next one they just yeah. seem there's a lot of composure there a lot of intensity it's a really nice balance I, wow. yeah I love the balance that they all have in 
you know, their lives, it seems as well. Like yeah. Rachel, mom of three now, I find that has just brought perspective, I guess, as, as motherhood often will. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're an amazing team. They're all, uh, you know, so is Jones, so is Anderson. Uh, those top three are, are great, but Holman is a notch above. I agree. It's going to be so good. Uh, Joe, outstanding perspective. That's why mm-hmm. you're in the big bucks on the yeah. TSN broadcast. So get yeah. get in there. It's it's showtime for you uh, and really just enjoy it. This is this is when it gets really good. You're so huh? great on air. Thanks you're for warming me up for the day, you guys. I'm dialed in now. Yeah, you go. <laughs> is there anything she can't do? No. Thank God she's not doing the push-up. To get out of here, we're going to oh, talk God, about Oh, God, we're not there yet. We're still only four months post, baby. We're not even close, Charlie. I'm going to guarantee she- <laughs> Do the okay, see you guys. Bye, Joe. Thank you. And uh, her her uh, her commentary is just so good. I love her on air. It's like, really talk soft. about talk about like uh, just totally adding to the insights and the experience of watching that. We are we are so blessed for that. Okay, yeah. uh, we talked about the Jennifer Jones retirement tour, but we also teed up the fact that this was going to be the last Scotties ever for Team Galusha as we know it. And haven't they provided so many wonderful moments, Colleen? And there's Joanne Rizzo and Carrie Galusha soaking up the moments. And what an emotional scene at the end of the game as they all walk down the ice one final time and they're going to join us. uh, And shout out, by the way, to UConn, who won their first game and the arena just exploded uh, for their victory. It was really nice to see that as they work hard in the Yukon to do what Carrie has done and Jamie Cooey have done in the Northwest Territories to make a viable competitive team. They do the work for sure. Beautiful scenes, uh, so, so memorable. And now Carrie and Joe are here together. Good morning to you both. Did you get Hi. Are we just get down in. the hallway from each other here? Yeah. Yes. yes. <laughs> Nice to see you guys. Congratulations on an exciting uh, game last night, beating Jennifer Jones, but also on what a run you guys have had. Carrie, what is this? We I know we talked to you on our last curling show, but to have been in the moment, what was it like for you? Yeah, it was bittersweet. We, we worked so hard as a team. We're all very, very close. Uh, it's been a wild ride. We've had, we put curling on the map for the North, for the NWT with this team. And um, it was just really sad last night when it was our last time on the ice. And um, But it was great to come out and beat one of the top teams. Um, that's our team. Uh, we, we, we didn't play well all week at times. We were very up and down, so on our execution. So um, it was really nice to come out strong and get that win. Mm. Joanne, um- I can't think of a more storybook finish um, for for you with that incredible shot, the way the crowd reacted, just everything was like a movie moment. So tell us from your perspective what that was like, because that was that was one hell of a way to go out. Yeah, I couldn't have uh, scripted it better myself, actually. We just saw it on TV and there's a replay and she started crying again. (laughs) Like two minutes yeah. ago. They were showing all the end moments and the hugs, so I got teared up. So um no, but the ending was great. Um I felt like it was the only shot that I was able to make. And um I just asked Carrie, please let me throw it. And lo and behold, it worked out, and that's great. And then um I was actually surprised. We I didn't think that they were gonna shake hands. So <laughs> we turned around and then that was it. So it was kind of a nice way to finish for sure. I- I think it was smart they shook hands, given the schedule they've got mm. into today, that both Jones and Holman had to be on the ice last night. Yeah. Uh, thank you for not making the shot you could have made to beat us. Or is it too, oh, yeah, yeah. Is it too soon to it say? It was very close, Colleen. I know that. <laughs> yeah. I know you had us so in checkmate there. It was like... <laughs> I know. Well, you know, the ice was running just a little bit straighter yesterday. Um, so those hits were a little bit maybe more manageable. But... Yeah. yeah. Okay. The future, Carrie, because you've hinted that maybe you're gone, maybe you're not. She's not gone. <laughs> no. I I would like to get here with my daughter um, at least once. We mm-hmm. 
have talked about adding her as a fifth player at times just to bring her for the experience, but that's just never worked out. We've always had a full-time fifth player. Yeah. So um, I'm thinking about curling one more year and mentoring um, Sydney and maybe one of her teammates. And um, Sean has talked about coming back as well. Um, I've had a few people reach out to me as well. So I don't know. We'll, we'll see. I, I don't, Joe asked me yesterday, I think what, what's your team going to be next year? And I have no idea. It's, it's just kind of thoughts in my head that I would like to maybe do one more year and then retire. Um, there isn't really anybody in the North to kind of take mm -hmm. our place. Um, there's yeah. Sharon Cormier has a really good senior team. Like they could maybe um, play for the Scotties, but we, and we have some club, some good club championship teams, mm -hmm. but no one like us that puts in the work and travels. And yeah, um, so it's going to be tough. It's going to be building for the next few years out of the NWT with our team not yeah. playing. So, um, which isn't good. So, yeah. right. I mean, we, we saw the, the example in a lot of ways with none of it. Right. And, yeah. and, and who mm -hmm. steps into that place and how do you even keep it in the minds of people to make sure that curling is important? Joe, you're coming from the outside perspective to join this team and to see what they mean to the North, maybe share some perspectives on what this team does mean to the people of the North, because you're a part of it now. Oh yeah. I think, I mean, I feel inspired just being on this team in the North because, um, uh, you know, we get a lot of coverage and um, we have a lot of fans from the North. And I feel like uh, there's been a few years where we qualified and we set a record and, you know, every, every time we come here, we've, we've done better at some things and put NWT on the map. So I'm really proud to be part of it. I've learned a lot from the girls. And um, even with Kevin, uh, we've learned a lot this week. And mm. so I think that there's still good things that are coming in the future. I mean, Carrie can still get an import and replace me as last thrower, whatever she wants. So that it's still open. <laughs> she <laughs> can take applications. You know, there's a lot of options still for Carrie. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Great. Well, it was an amazing finish. Um, Carrie, can I say since, uh, uh, can I say that I beat Kevin Cooey? <laughs> you to can. can. Okay, good. Okay, you can. I'm going to announce it. And I beat Kevin Cooey. Mm hmm hundred percent. Kind of not. Carrie, one of the things, a uh, viral moment on social media last night in the post game oh uh, was what, what you said, call. I don't even know if we talked about this, but we didn't. the mics are always hot. And Carrie, yeah. what did you oh, say yeah. to Jennifer Jones? <laughs> <laughs> well, we had for a very long time. I didn't realize the cameras were still on us because it was a very long hug. And I told her, I said, don't play like that tomorrow. <laughs> We're friends. I feel like it was okay to say because we're friends. Um, we've known each other a long time, but yes, it it I didn't realize I was on on. I kind of regret saying it a little bit, but at the same time, yeah. I know she knows I meant well because I I want the best for Jen. I I I hope they go out and they're a great team and we just caught them on a nod of they weren't they weren't sharp so when we were and we just caught them so i just hope she plays well today i'm sure she will listen uh I thanks for the memories of this year they were they were terrific no kidding thanks. No kidding. Yes, thanks colleen thanks for it was a great week with you as here as well we saw you lots you were in our pool and yeah it was, it was nice fun to see people cool. like you and glenn howard and kevin on the bench it was yeah. really cool yeah and Don yeah and i feel like you're gonna see more and more of that stuff yeah absolutely absolutely yeah, yeah i i mean an all-star field and an all-star coaching squad right on all those <laughs> benches if you look at it so yeah. i just honestly uh on behalf of thousands and thousands of curling fans across our country and beyond thank you both for so many incredible moments it yeah. really that was emotional last night so so thank you <laughs> it was <laughs> yeah congratulations Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Have a great day. Okay. And I don't think you have to worry about Jennifer Jones not playing. She's had an amazing week. She's made so many great shots. The reality for both Jennifer and Rachel, the games didn't mean anything to them last right. week. And uh, so 
uh, that our team was able to play Rachel under that circumstance where she doesn't have to be as fired up. Rachel played amazing, but um, yeah, it, they, they, they weren't, they were non, they, they weren't, they weren't important games and they're in, in, in what they need to do going forward. And just a quick note about the comment by Carrie. Obviously, you could you could see she was she was saying that she felt she regretted it, but but it was no. such a, it was, it was such a beautiful fun moment, and I think that's what we've loved. I'm stretching about. my legs. Okay, I'm going to show my curling show. I'm in a full yoga position here well, on the bed. You Whoa. are literally between the sheets on your bed in the hotel room. Oh my gosh! All right, listen, uh, Jennifer Jones in her final Scotties, maybe. Um, <laughs> We're getting the woman we love. The woman we love, of course, uh, the mother that has raised the great curling champion. And I think we might have more of the fam with Carol Jones this morning. Good morning, Carol. Oh, our wisdom morning. vice person. You're our Oprah. It, right, we, we bring you on to the show to to you know ask our questions about life and love and curling, yeah. Carol. Um, and so here we are. The playoffs at the Scotties, you've been here so many times, and yet this all feels very different. Is that the case for you, Carol? Um, a, a little bit, obviously. Uh, it's been an emotional week or two, and this week has been emotional in many sense. And I love listening to Carrie. I mean, we met Carrie, I met Carrie and her family in 1990. Three, I think. Wow. Um, and so we've been friends for many, 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 many years. Loved watching her, loved her family. And interestingly enough, to, um, we came here, I'm staying, or I was staying with friends in an Airbnb in a kind of like a duplex environment. So we go to the arena one day and right by our seats is Linda Cooey. So I'm so happy to see Linda and I, we're, we're hugging and, and she said, are you staying in an Airbnb? And I said, yeah. So we got through that conversation and we're neighbors. She lives in the, <laughs> she was staying in the apartment, right? Or the, the house right next to us. So uh, that was pretty special. And uh, we've shared a lot of uh, curling memories over the years. And, and I'm so proud of Carrie and her team, how they, worked so hard to bring the North to us mm -hmm. and um, over the many years and they've done so well. Mm. I was blown away this week by the little Yukon team. Like, yeah, they're, they're just the sweetest young girls. And I think that they're going to do awesome in years to come. Um, I'm getting a little off track here, but I wanted to say to Colleen, it was so incredible to see you behind the bench, uh, a, a woman coach. Yay, yay. Thank <laughs> and you, uh, with all your curling knowledge, that was pretty impressive. So, uh, and your girls did well too, you know, mm -hmm. so it, it's been a, a great, great week. Now, getting back to Jen, I think yeah. that I can say that. Um, Ever since she started to curl, now you're you're going to get emotional here. So, <laughs> but ever since she started to curl, um, she brought tremendous joy to our family. Mm -hmm. And back in the early 2000s, or even in in juniors in the 90s, and this week, she's brought tremendous joy to me. So. Mm -hmm. I can only imagine how much joy she brought to you, you know, just having yeah. a son that curls and you're just, you're, you're, you're just so proud of what they're doing and how they're handling themselves on the ice. Well, uh, and, and you know, you gotta be proud of who she you is. You know, Colleen, people. going into this week, knowing um, it's the finale, if you like, um, I, my wish, my secret wish, I didn't say anything to her. I just wanted them to go out play, play well, um, leave it all out on the ice and see what happens. They've had a tremendous week. They've had an awesome week. And I'm happy for that because I think that's, that will give her a good feeling. Yeah. Leaving. Well, I was so excited. She was in our pool because, um, I remember her, I remember being at the Canadian junior. Um, yes. Where 
one. And I remember being at, at behind the scoreboard in St. St. John's, Newfoundland, seeing her win. Oh. However, you should know, Carol, I am the president of the unretire Jennifer Jones. <laughs> I think it's a huge mistake. Unless you're not going to be moving in with their house and taking care of the kids and all that sort of stuff, because I do. Well, think with the support yeah, that somebody the kids, said, well, now you're okay. retiring too, <laughs> and I, I'm not really retiring, but um, in that regard, um, but mentioning the the joy that she has brought from the curling perspective, but it's allowed me as a grandma as her mom and as a grandma to her children. Um, I have the most incredible bond with her two little yeah. girls because I've seen them a lot. Yeah. And that's, that's not going to stop. Yeah. I mean, I'm still going to see them a lot. So, and, and interestingly enough, as you probably know now, little Bella is curling yeah. and she loves it. She absolutely loves curling. And so I'm looking forward to... Uh, seeing her out on the ice and yeah yeah now, anyhow i'm i'm president still of the, the <laughs> movement of jennifer cannot retire and if she wins the scotties i say she's just going to be going to the olympics so. she's coming back yeah. she's no, coming back. she could she could be who knows yeah. you know yeah. what we'll um, see what the universe is going to do it's it's just life and and changes within your life and you just kind of have to go with it and and you know she's probably got things that I'm not even aware of that she wants to do and is going to do. So, yeah, it's been it's been a it's been many years of wonderful memories. Yeah. And I, I I said to a friend that it's I'm so blessed, so lucky to have been witness to it. Wow! And to be a part of it, really. Yeah. And so. Yeah. Um, and it's been fun this week because I've made so many friends across the country and so on, and I've seen a lot of them. And so it's been, it's been nice for me too. Yeah. So. What was it like for you and your hubby at Sochi to watch her in that masterful performance win the gold medal? What was your, how many tears did you shed? When was, how, how did your heart not burst with joy? Well, <clears throat> shed lots of tears. There's no question. Um, tears of joy, obviously, and I, I, I feel very good about the fact that my husband was able to be in Sochi, yeah. and 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 see that because it was really because of him that Jen just developed a an unbelievable passion for the sport and just wanted to play well and do well and. She has. So yeah. I think my husband is probably looking down saying, you done good, girl. So, yeah, you both did good. But president <laughs> of the She Can't Retire. Uh, oh, OK. <laughs> Jones. We can't have curling without a Jones there, Carol. Well, exactly, <laughs> Colleen. Girls, exactly. The world's got to keep <laughs> keeping up with the Joneses. And if she leaves. God darn it, I'm going to have to come back, and I'm old. <laughs> well, I think you're going to still see her around. Obviously, she and Brent are going to continue mixed with doubles. some mixed doubles, um, and I think they're they're off to, is it Fredericton? I think? Fredericton, um, yes. At yeah. the end of March or in March there sometime, so they'll be doing that for sure, and who knows? Really, um, I have not asked her, to be honest. Mm -hmm. I, it's a decision that she made and on her own or with her family, uh, certainly no input from me. And um, I'm sure she'll come up with something that is curling related. So, yeah. Well, Carol, you are the ultimate curling mom. And yeah. uh, it has been so beautiful to hear your words and your perspective today. And, and I know curling fans really just adore you. So, uh, you know, really soak up, soak up these moments. I know you are, um, but it's always just so wonderful to, to see you and, and hear your perspective. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much to the two of you. And um, yeah, it's, it's been, it's been pretty incredible. And, you know, everything from now on, from this moment, on for this week is really icing on the cake and mm -hmm. 
you know, it's it's all all good, and I'm super super beyond proud. Um, and um, she's my girl. Yeah, nice. Love her to bits. <laughs> awesome. That is special. Okay, good Carol. With us, Carol. And yeah. and just a quick question, Devin. Where are you? Uh, <laughs> I, 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 somebody somebody said, well, where is Devin? I said, well, I know he's not at the Scotties, but he was going to be in Portugal. No, no, maybe he's in the U.S. I don't know. Right. I uh, I got in from Florida at 2 a.m. Uh, to Toronto last night. And in a few hours, I'm headed to the airport to fly overnight to Portugal. But I will be watching Carol, of course, <laughs> and uh, relaying what I can to the great Curly. And, band, you know, so. uh, if you ever get to Winnipeg, either one of you. Um, Your sandwiches. Lunch is good. <laughs> we're, we'll do we're lunch. Coming. We're coming. Okay. We are. Awesome. All right, Carol. Wonderful to Thank see you, you both. Good to see Wonderful you. Wonderful to see you. Enjoy today. Okay, I will. Thank you so Thank much. You, Carol. Everyone's favorite curling mom. And here's to more icing on the cake for Jennifer Jones. I'm stretching my legs. Again. Okay, well, and yeah, because we're going. We, you, you said this show's going to be an hour. So let's keep it moving. And of course, uh, watching everything and writing this week, putting on her journalist cap, Chelsea Carey. Hmm. I love it, you journalist, you. How has hmm. that been? Good to see you, Chelsea. Yes. Good to see you too. Yeah, it's been interesting. I've never, uh, I've never pretended to be a journalist before, so it's been an adventure, but it's been really fun. Don't use the word pretend and journalist in the same sentence. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Chels? Uh, down to the final six, uh, what has stood out to you so far? And I think uh, you would probably agree that the teams we expected to be there are, are probably the ones who are there. Yeah, for the most part, I think, I mean, your, your sort of third team from each pool was, was a bit of a uh, question mark, like who, you know, that was, that was reasonably wide open, I think, in, in both pools at the start of the week, but no one terribly surprising um, that made it to the final round. And uh, Selena Sturme obviously playing really well and, and, you know, getting a break here and there when they need it. So they're on a bit of a roll and being Team Alberta and Alberta is a pretty special thing. So um, that's nice to see. Team Canada, Carrie Anderson has shown an incredible amount of resiliency with, uh, mm. you know, dealing with the loss of Brianne Harris at the start of the week and, and, you know, still playing as well as they have and, and doing what they've done is just a really impressive uh, thing to watch. And then Rachel Holman is Rachel Holman. I mean, she's doing what she's done all season and, and they were the hottest team maybe in the world, but certainly in Canada coming into the Scotties and she's still showing that. And then Jennifer is Jennifer. I mean, it would be just like her to win this Scotties in her right. last appearance. So it's uh, yeah, it should be it should be a really interesting week. And then both Team Cameron and Team Laws were looking like they weren't going to qualify, and then snuck in, which can give you some momentum and and you know put you in a in a position where you kind of feel like you have nothing to lose. And right. in the old format with the championship pool, they would have been in trouble because of the extra right. losses, but now they're not. So it mm -hmm. will be very interesting to watch. Well, let's talk about this format. I mean, given that. You know, laws with four getting in on last stone draw. Joanne Courtney said earlier, it's kind of shades of Eve Muirhead at the Olympics. But mm -hmm. what do you think of this new uh, system, especially the fact that Holman and Jones were on the ice last night and conceivably could play this afternoon again tonight? Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm on the fence about it. I, I like that it's back to a page. Um, I think top three is a bit tough with a field of 18 teams. So, you know, involving a few more teams in that, I think, makes some sense. And what it does do, so it meant that last night didn't mean anything for both Jen mm -hmm. and Rachel, as it turns out. But what it does do is give the two other teams in, in Cameron and Laws more of a chance than they ever had before. Like you had a championship pool, but basically a couple teams were trying to play spoiler. You, you right. had to win out if you had three or four losses, so uh, which is really hard to do in that championship pool, of course. So yeah. I, I, I'm on the fence. I, I like things about it, and I, and I don't like some things about it in that we had you know, only one game on the ice last night that really mattered. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, is, is there an advantage for um, Carrie? Did you find she was flying a little under the radar given the news about Jones and, uh, uh, you know, that that kind of took center stage, plus Holman having such an incredible season. You almost forget she's going for her fifth straight Canadian yeah. championship. Yeah, I mean, it's actually shocking how little that was talked about going in, <laughs> to be honest. But um 
you know, it's, it's obviously it's a, it would be huge if they were to win it, but then they unfortunately ended up in the spotlight for the wrong reasons uh, early in the week. And they've done an incredible job of dealing with that. So uh, it'll be interesting to see what we see from them in the playoffs and kudos credit to Kristen Karwacki. She's played amazing Mm -hmm. and has fit in quite seamlessly and credit to the team for their systems holding up regardless of missing a player. That means you've got a good system in place when you can bring in another player and it still functions. You need this. Chels, just a word on on Sturme. I was telling to mm-hmm. Colleen, I think she's fearless with her strategy and her game calling, live and die by the sword. I kind of love it and it's worked. You said she's needed some things go her way. Colleen has always said you need a little bit of that magic to Absolutely. win a championship. But I love the aggressive play calling by her. First Scotties, home province, seems pretty cool out there. Yeah, they have been there. They've been very composed and nothing seems to rattle them and they're and they've not given up when they've looked like they might lose of their first game earlier than they did. Right. And they just keep plugging away and and putting rocks in play and things have happened for them. And it's it's impressive. Danielle Schmeeman has played very, very well, which I think is going to be key for them moving forward. She's going to she's going to have to. I mean, she's got, uh, you know, Carly Burgess and Tracy Fleury and like these the top thirds in the game that she's that she's going to have to keep up with it. But she's certainly shown that she can do that. So yeah. I think that's going to be key. And yeah, Selena's always been that way since since I've known her. Um, she she's a great shooter and she just is very confident. So she puts the broom down and I go, geez, I don't know if I would play that. Like, that's a scary double. But she just doesn't. Yeah, no fear is a good way yeah. to describe it. And and it's worked. So, I mean, go with it. Like, it's it's working. Yeah. Yeah. Tracy's owning the third position, though, isn't it? Tracy Flurry. Like, it's amazing how that team with uh, Rachel back calling and throwing last and Tracy finally kind of looking like she's part of the team and playing well. So she's been very much on fire. She'll be when you always think of key matchups. I always think the thirds are the kingmakers in a curling game. But yeah. what do you think of Tracy's play? Yeah, it's um I was actually on CBC radio this morning talking about that and and I think that them both stepping into their these roles as Tracy as a full third and Rachel back in the house. Mm. They've just both really kind of settled in and I just I never really quite thought they were. I mean, they were still winning and doing well, but it just didn't quite feel natural in this mm. and and kudos to Tracy cuz that like she skipped as far as I know her entire life. So, yeah. um kudos to her for really owning that and stepping into that role and learning to sweep and doing all that stuff and I think Rachel is back where she needs to be. And I think it's evidenced by her play. It's she, Rachel's a great sweeper. That's not the issue. The issue is, you know, you're used to seeing rocks come at you and you're now you're trusting somebody else to ice you because you haven't been watching that the whole end when you're, right. when you're throwing last, it's just a very right. different thing. And I think it's, I think it's more difficult than people realize it is to be just a last rock thrower. Not everybody can do that. Some people yeah. it's great for like Jill brothers seems to thrive in that role. Yeah. David Nedwin thrived in that role. Like it exists, sure. but yeah. it's hard. Like I would struggle with that. And, yeah. and so I think that, um, that they both have really settled in and you're seeing it in their play and you're seeing it in their cohesiveness as a team as well. Chelsea, can you, uh, as we wind down with you and get ready for these big games, can you give the audience a little bit of perspective of what kind of changes when we get into this part of a Scotties? Like the round robins behind you, now the stakes are as high as ever. You've played in championships. What changes? What goes right in these big pressure moments and how can these things unravel and get away from you in these big moments? Well, the, the pressure is the key word that you just said there. And so, I mean, you, there's pressure at the Scotties regardless, but you, the first part of the week, you know, you're trying to get through and you're trying to win and all that stuff, but you can almost taste it at this point, not quite yet. Right. Uh, that's probably a tomorrow thing more than a today thing, but you're at that point in the week. And so then all of a sudden the, the collar just tightens a bit with, with mm-hmm. everything, with your preparation for the game, with the shots during the game, with the tension maybe between your teammates. If somebody misses a shot, those, mm-hmm. those kinds of little things can derail pretty quick. And it's about having a short memory. And it's about, um, uh, my dad told me when I was a kid, and this has always been what I've said to my teammates going into a week like the Scotties, it's a really long week. And often the team that wins is the team that is able to stay the most emotionally stable. Mm-hmm. It's a roller coaster of a week. So the, the the people that manage that the best tend to come out on top of it because it's hard. It's hard to manage that. So if you can kind of bump along in the middle emotionally and not get too high or too low, that's what sets you up for success in something like this. And that only gets more true as the pressure mounts and you go into these playoff games. And that takes practice. Like you can't just, absolutely you haven't done the work all year to be an emotionally stable person, Devin and I, we, we're, we're out of this now. I'm very emotionally <laughs> stable. You have to practice the mindfulness and steadiness all the time. She says, she moves her yoga position around. 
Well, and I think you're going to see some of the coaches come into that too. Like there's, we, we reference the bench strength here, right? With the, with high performance men's and women's players, um, yourself included, Colleen, that especially for a team like Selena Sturme, that's new, you're, you're going to see them lean on some outside people probably to try to manage that and, and mm-hmm. keep that going. You're also going to probably see them lean a little bit on Desiree Hawes, who's the only one that's been there before. Right, right. Well, you said it, it would be so Jennifer Jones to go out there and win it. And I've always <laughs> thought that when you have that much savviness and you're battle tested, it's almost like you're going into these big games, as I imagine it, with a little bit of a lead. Like, host money. Host host money. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Chelsea, you've been outstanding. Uh, yeah. Who knows? Journalist calling. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> See you tonight at the patch. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you guys prepared at the patch. I heard we did. We chatted. Yeah. (laughs) And text me so I've got your content. Yes, I will do that. Okay. Enjoy it. Great stuff as always, Chelsea. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Really good insights. I love what you said about the caller tightens a little bit. And and call you've been through so many of these that, you know, like I, 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 when I've talked to athletes, I'll never know uh, because. You know, I'm not good enough. But. No, but you you live you your job is a pressure filled job, so you do know it. Well, sure, and and there it it can it can be a blur, like it can yeah. get away from you, and right. so just staying present, right? The Don't worry with, twice. The, the problem with becoming a champion, um, this is going to sound horrible to say, but the second and third and fourth place, it almost doesn't matter, right? You don't get you don't get anything to the. To the winner go all this the victor goes to spoils Did right I get that quote right you got um, there. and you know it you know what's on the line in every way not just getting the title and coming back and being team canada and going to the worlds and getting right. parted and right and the prize money here like there's there's great prize money hundred thousand hundred thousand yeah, so all the, of that yeah. is sort of um there's just a lot going on and and you know like the eminem song kind of go you only got one shot do not blow this chance to blow whatever the rest of the well here we are folks pauline quoting (laughs) eminem we've seen it all all right listen uh there was a viral photo that went around earlier this week of some wonderful curling fans Mm -hmm. there it is talk about being fascinated by the curling wearing a fascinator yes you and i being being hat gurus, of course we love this story. I I think we should these should go on sale somewhere, and we were able to track down Lorraine, who is responsible for some of this fascinating. I oh, hi. hi, little royal family uh, feel with this. Okay, where'd you get the idea, Lorraine? Well, from Pinterest. When we okay. when we Life booked this trip, okay. we thought, yeah, we need some outfits, and there they were. There they were. Okay, tilt them down so we can see the full. Look at that. But did you make them? Yeah, yes. we did actually. Okay. Yeah. So you took some bridal uh, bridal wear there at the top, and then what else is it? Styrofoam? Uh, no, um, poster board and some of the lace. Okay, and where are the curling rocks? Oh, they were from a game. Oh, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> Did you guys make that sweatshirt based on, you know, what do you have? Do you have the cricket? Sorry? Do you have the cricket or what is that? Oh, you no, buy no, no make- we, we were making up theme days. So we went and ordered the t-shirts and we got the baklava and we went and bought actual curling brooms and attached them on. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Lorraine, right, who's with you? I, we, we didn't get introduced. This is my friend that introduced me, and her name is Roberta Gardeski, and she'll tell you about her husband. No, no, I just come from a long curling family, and uh, my husband was a very competitive curler, and that's how I got into curling. And I've just been following it, and I've never been to a Scotty. So nice. Opportunity. So you're, a, you're a rookie. A L- Lorraine, is she being humble? I think there's she more. Is. Yes, her husband won the world seniors and the Canadian seniors in 2003. Oh, and he went to the Brian Yeah. Wow. Nice. Okay, look at that. Now we're getting to the truth of it all right, right. now. Yeah. Um, how important is it for the fans to get into this spirit? Uh, we're missing some of that, aren't we? Yes. Well, we've had a fantastic time. Yeah. We haven't had a moment where we haven't laughed from the time we got up to the time we went to bed. And fans have been wonderful. We've just, it's been great for us as fans. 
and we just taking in every moment and it's wonderful and the curling has been absolutely great we've enjoyed every every bit of it it's been fun and looking stylish with the fast oh yes of course <laughs> i'm going to be making them i'll send you one Devin. send me one <laughs> uh, i want to be part of the crew lorraine how, how much how many of the draws have you taken in throughout all, all of them i haven't them. missed one <laughs> you haven't missed a draw did you guys have no. to get to the game soon yeah yeah we're on our way <laughs> Yeah, you're you're like wrap it up here. Uh, so so you make the hats, you're getting ready. What's your sense? Who who are you cheering for? Right. I mean, what's your sense on who's gonna win this thing? Isn't this incredible? The last teams remaining. Oh yeah, I'm totally Team Alberta. She's I'm Team Alberta, of course, but I do like Carrie Anderson's team. I've been following her, and I love her team. But I'm Team Alberta too. It's exciting yeah. to see our team in there. So yeah. either or. It's been great. Also nice to see the youngins uh, thriving oh, definitely. so well, I, you know, because it's really been a three horse race for the last couple of years between mm -hmm. Joan Anderson and Homan. So it's nice to see this oh. young team that everybody should look who's chomping at your heels. Definitely. That little Yukon team last night was just fantastic. Oh, that was emotional. That was really yeah. nice. Very nice. Yeah. Hard not to, not to shed a tear watching all of that <laughs> unfold. No doubt. Uh, <laughs> All right, you've been so gracious with your time uh, and showing off your hats. You're going to be the fan favorites, no doubt, around the arena. Um, so just really enjoy the finish. Uh, I'm sure you're you're taking in every game. The rest, are you not missing a draw for the entire Scotties? Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow, that's uh, that's hardcore. <laughs> that is hardcore. We need more curling fans like you, Lorraine, Roberta. It was so wonderful to meet you. And thank you so much for making time for us. Wonderful to meet you too. And thank you for having us. Awesome. Enjoy the curling. <laughs> All thank right. You. Thank you. Great you know, stuff. The, the UConn fans had a big delegation. I thought, does, is everybody, I'm going to stretch again, Devin. <laughs> um, and Saskatchewan had an army as well in their, what do we call them? Bunny hops, the bunny hood. The bunny wood. hug. Bunny hug. They had the green bunny hugs on, so you would have liked that. It's, it's, the, only it's, thing, it's, the only thing missing from this Scotties was Devin Haru. I know, I know. And let's not belabor it because a piece of my heart is uh, hurting not being there. But I've been trying to be a part of it as much as possible. Mm -hmm. And this is, when, this is when it gets really good. Uh, the feature TV game at 2 p.m. Eastern, noon in Calgary, is going to be Homan and Anderson, Sturme and Jones at the same time. I'll be providing updates as I pack for Portugal. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, uh, Call, I know you'll be heading uh, to the arena. I'm taking notes on these teams, yeah. Yeah, and, and then, of course, we'll buckle up for the finish. So many storylines. And then, Call, we're going to have a wrap show on Monday night, I'm going to uh, sacrifice sleep and be in Portugal and do a show with you. I don't know what time of night or morning. That right. Be, but, but you'll still be on Eastern time zone. Right. And of, course, and of course, we did the uh, competition with everybody uh, making their picks on who the last teams will be. So we'll be able to announce oh. uh, the winners of those uh, curling show prize packs to see who got it right, right, might we be in for a surprise? Will Holman get back on top of the world and win a fourth Scotties? Will Jones win a historic seventh? Will Anderson win a historic fifth? Or will the rookie Laws, I mean, yeah. Sturme, could she win? Cameron. This is good. Yeah, buckle up. Is that buckle up time? That's, that's when we say. That's this body's been nothing but drama. I can't believe it. Listen, not. if we wrap up in a minute, we'll have kept it under an hour. Let's do it. <laughs> Enjoy it, curling fans. Uh, it's been so fun, and now it gets really good. Enjoy the finish of the Scotties. Safe flight to you, Devin. Thanks, producer So. Thank you, Carl. Thanks, So. Curling now enters the Sports Weekend Spotlight. Hey, hey.